from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here in New York City for Blockchain Week New York, as well as Consensus 2018. You're watching theCUBE. We got two great guests here. CUBE alumni, Al Bergio's been on many times, a hot startup, Digital Bits, he's got a great project. It's really getting a lot of traction. Uh, you know, been there before, fellow entrepreneur. Um, and he's got a, you know, big news, and he's with Jamie Leverton, General Manager, VP in Canada and APAC for Cogio Pier One. Saw the press release, congratulations Al. Thank you, thank you John. Jamie, yeah. welcome to New York. Thank you very much. So um, Al, talk about the deal that you did with these guys, yeah, news went out, so, what's significant about it? It's, well, I think it's very significant to, to the blockchain space. In a lot of respects, it's very powerful technology that a lot of people speak of when it comes to distributed ledger technology, but in some respects, with regards to, let's say, certain industries, it's, it's still just starting to, to, to uh, work its way into the space. Um, we basically are trying to drive innovation at multiple levels, and, and we can achieve that with the support of great partners like Kojiko Pier One. And you know, they, you know, I'll let Jamie explain what they do, but from a partnership perspective, um, you can kind of think of what we've created at Digital Bits really is this open source technology that we want many people to consume, not just consumers, but the enterprises, SaaS companies, and so forth. So a lot of those companies live in Kojiko data centers worldwide. And so they're just a natural partner for us. Um, you know, they, they uh, you know, are a company we always see in the forefront of innovation and, and they're doing it with blockchain. So we're really excited to have them as a partner. Jamie, I want you to take a minute to explain uh, what you guys do and how that fits into blockchain. I think it fits in incredibly well. So for those of you not familiar with Kojiko Pier One, we own and operate a, a global network. So we have our own connectivity, as well as 16 data centers globally. We have uh, our own private cloud. We partner with the hyperscale public clouds. We have uh, managed hosting, colocation. We work with 6,500 enterprise customers around the world who live in our data centers or on our networks. Uh, and we really believe that blockchain is, is the future and there's no better place for it to live than an infrastructure like ours. Cloud computing was always poo-pooed. Be oh, cloud computing, no one will ever give up their data centers uh, and hosting and cloud kind of came together. And, but that, that drove a lot of growth. The same thing's happening now with these networks. You're seeing blockchain needs to run on something, just right. like the old argument was, Cloud's going to kill the server business. Well, servers still need to be bought, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so blockchain needs to run somewhere Absolutely. on servers, right? Yeah. So, there's some decentralized servers, but there's some big ones too. Right. Is that how you see it? I mean, does that's really kind of what I'm seeing happening out that there? That is exactly, exactly how we see it, and we. I feel very blessed for the infrastructure that we build, uh, the reputation that we have in this industry, which is literally perfectly poised to support Web 3.0 and everything that is that is coming, starting with partnerships like this. Al, I want to get your thoughts about, you know the networking business, you've done a couple startups yeah. in the area, and you, you know, transit, you've done all that stuff. You guys just did some news out there where you're, they're spinning up stuff. I mean, we saw what happened with Stellar. Yeah. Okay, can you explain this nuance point? Because it's kind of an inside baseball kind of deep, geeky thing, yeah. but it's really significant for the industry. Well, at the end of the day, you know, everyone's talking about enterprise adoption, enterprise adoption, but as we've just discussed, enterprise today, the, the hardware is not in their possession anymore. And so they don't need to be the only organization to be able to support what the enterprise wants to do, or even the SaaS company. Many, in fact, the majority of SaaS companies don't manage their own hardware either, right? And they're relying on cloud providers to provide that compute, storage, and so forth. So there needs to be that proficiency and almost think of it like a standard, and not necessarily one. Let's say Linux is a standard, Windows is, there's different flavors of Linux, there's database technologies and so on. But whichever they're choosing to use, it needs to be supported at every layer of that digital supply chain. And we are basically, we see that. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're working with partners at every level there. The ones that we know get it, 
you know, I really yeah. understand compute and network because it's very important. Low latency, well, we, I mean, I can, I, I, we're things. in the hallway here. On the, we're in the middle of the floor here and yeah. consensus. So we've been hearing a lot of hallway chatter and I always like to eavesdrop, you know, <laughs> being the journalist, reporter, you know, the guy that I try to be, as you know. But I hear a lot of things. One thing I heard all week consistently is that I wanna, I'm going to spin up some blockchain nodes. So it reminds me of the old days of spinning up clusters, right? Like yeah. um, storage clusters, right? So this notion of spinning up a blockchain cluster, I've heard, or I've heard provisioning clusters, or what does that mean to, well, to spin up a blockchain? Thing, yeah, so and, is, is it that kind of trend yeah. that we're seeing? So if it's a primitive blockchain, um, you know, Bitcoin, for example, it's, it's the grandfather of all, let's say, blockchains that we're familiar with. Uh, or this era is familiar with. Um, it does a few things, processes, transactions, anybody could spin up one uh, and what have you. But if you want to take something and make it enterprise grade, there needs to be APIs. You need to be know, able to know how to integrate, consume those APIs and so forth. And so not every company is going to know how to do this. There's a gap. There's a shortage of blockchain engineers. There's a shortage of engineers, period, that understand this stuff. So it has to be supported. It has to be supported. There needs to be companies that yeah. can support the enterprise to consume this. So spinning up is easy for an engineer that's proficient in blockchain to say, yeah, we're spinning up nodes. We're, we're going to take our work really hard, purchase hardware, deploy it, ship it, many, many, many months. Um, maybe they'll use uh, Amazon if that's well suited for them or some other cloud provider like Kojic or what have you. But the challenge is, what's everyone else going to do, right? Uh, if they're not proficient in that technology, they need partners that get it. And that's where managed cloud comes in. And, and that's where we're very focused. So what does this mean for digital bits in your project? I mean, I'm just trying to squint through. It's kind of it's, you know, nerdy, geeky stuff, but I like it and it's networking. But now you've got a project called Digital Bits. you got some horsepower with the Kojiko deal, right? So you can spin up blockchain, yeah. I can imagine. What's it mean for the Digital Bits project and the impact of what you're trying to do? So, um, it's an open source project, and um, from our perspective, we want to see many, many enterprises and many, many uh, SaaS um, and other organizations use this technology. It's not going to just happen. You don't just build it and they will come. So you need strategic partners that see the value in it, it whether directly or through other lines of business that they have. Um, and and co-evangelizing this technology and supporting the enterprise in their consumption. And so, you know, again, partners like Kojiko really help us create that new standard of technology that they can consume. And it becomes mainstream this way. Jamie, what's your take on this? Obviously, you, d you did a deal with these guys. Um, what was the benefit to you, got you doing it? Obviously, you had customers moving in the direction of having a decentralized application set of infrastructure to provide the power of the next generation. Why this deal? Why these guys? I think when, when we look at who we partner with, and, and build out our ecosystem. It's really about the relationship with the individuals behind it. We're very much about trust. We've worked with Al before. We, we, we believe in his vision. We know that he um, goes at projects with passion and integrity. And ultimately, the reason we did this with Digital Bits is because we believe in, in what Al's doing and, and his track record. Well, he's a, he, knows, he knows the technology. He's also been a successful entrepreneur. And he uh, understands network. Sorry to jump yeah. in, but Really understanding the, the, that, um, that the power of the cloud is only as good as the power of the network and the closer you can bring those things together, um, that's where the magic really happens and no one understands that better than Al. And when you look to build out blockchain going forward, yeah. like that's what you need. That's the power that you have to be able to harness and we don't have to educate them. Jamie, you've been doing a lot of innovative things. We were just talking before we came on camera. You got an innovation award last night in Ottawa. Uh, you couldn't make it down for the big party we had last night. Uh, with, I'm sorry, uh, I missed Jeff that Bezos party. Brother, <laughs> that was really really cool. Um, what are you doing innovative that you could share? I, mean, I love what you're doing. It's great work. What are some of the innovation things that you're proud of that you have to take a moment to share? Uh, we've we've partnered a lot with the incubators in Canada. So really working with startups, next generation technology, um, supporting the people that are that we think are, go are going to build the future. So we, that's where we put all of our attention as opposed to on 
a traditional large enterprise focus. Our focus is next-gen emerging incubators. We've had a lot of success in the gaming industry with artificial intelligence, which is really booming in Canada. Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto are creating incredible new companies focused on AI. A lot of them are partnered with us in our in our data centers and, and using our technology. So really I just see us continuing to, to push further and further as the industry moves. We want to be there moving with it. Are you going to be on the Canadian boat tonight? I call it the... Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the yes, I'm going to be on the Canadian the, the boat Ari, tonight. The Diorio That's yacht. right, yes, yes. Hopefully the rain subsides, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I'll be on the boat. Great, thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Al, congratulations on the news. Uh, big news from Digital Bits, open source project. Um, gaining steam, really disrupting the old loyalty platforms as one of its use cases. Check it out at Digital Bits. Uh, any URLs you want to share, Al, for the project? Digitalbits.io. You're watching theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, your host, here in New York all week for Blockchain Week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>